Hello everyone and welcome to the WCG for match four of the 2022 Texbet Australia Day T20 Big Bash, which sees another quarterfinal replay from last year's edition to get us underway in Group D. It's the two-time champions, Nice Gary, getting their tournament underway against the men in orange. Smack my pitch up to get us underway in Group D. The Crabs will have revenge on their mind after their excruciating quarterfinal loss at the hands of the two-time champs last time out. And as for the men in blue, they'll be looking to begin their quest for a third title with the ideal start. As we take a look at how Group D lines up, Nice Gary headlined the group after reaching the semi-final stage in last year's edition, going down to the eventual runners-up wet up. The Crabs smack my pitch up at the second seeds in this group after reaching the quarter-final stage in last year's edition for the very first time. And rounding out the group, it's the six offenders who can be destructive on their day. The captains are in the middle, ready for the toss. Gentlemen's, gentlemen's game. It's flat. So smack my pitch up, win the toss, and they have elected to bowl first. As we take a look at their side for this year's tournament, they make one change from the side that reached the quarter-final stage in last year's Australia Day T20 Big Bash. The side will be captained by Peter Fowler once again. Jake Casaccia lines up for the Crabs for the third straight edition, and making his full WCG debut is the left-hander Ryan McFarlane, who is expected to bring a bit of X-Factor to the Crabs lineup this time round. And as we take a look at Nice Gary's lineup for this year's tournament, they are forced into making one change from the side that reached the semi-final stage in last year's edition. And it is a massive loss for the men in blue, as Harry Dean is not available for today's tournament. The side will be captained by George Paneros once again, who is looking to become the first captain to lift the trophy on three occasions. Josh Bolling lines up once again for the men in blue. And it's Jack Sullivan who will slot into the Blues lineup for this year's edition. And just before we get underway, we'd like to thank our major sponsors for this year's tournament. Texbet, who have been fantastic since jumping on board. Bet local, bet with Tex. So the final match of round one about to get underway. It's nice Gary taking on Smack My Pitch Up, and we're ready to go. So it will be the blue skipper, George Paneros, who will get this innings underway for nice Gary. He may have to do the bulk of the scoring in this year's tournament with the absence of Harry Dean. So we're all ready to go in this Group D encounter, and it's going to be Ryan McFarlane who will bowl the first over of the innings. Here he's in now, round the wicket to Paneros. He begins with a full delivery, but this one slides down the leg side. So nice, Gary, are away. Here, perhaps a few nerves first up here from the debutant, who pushes this down the leg side. So no wicket for one in the opening over, as McFarlane continues again now to Paneros. And this one hits Paneros on the body, and he's going to move through for what looks like a leg by. I'm not sure how much of a stroke he's played here, but the umpire has let this go. Here's, we'll take a look at the replay. Uh, evasive action, maybe. So the two-time champions, no wicket for two in the opening over. It's going to be McFarlane to continue around the wicket. Here he's in now. This one's another full delivery, but this is another one that's pushed down the leg side. And that'll be called a wide. So some obvious nerves first up here for McFarlane. Just needs to find his radar here. McFarlane will continue again now to Paneros. And this one's a fuller delivery, and I think this hits Paneros on the thigh. And it goes onto the fence for no run. So nice, Gary. No wicket for three in the opening over. As McFarlane will continue around the wicket here to Paneros. Here he's in now. This one's a headhunter as Paneros ducks out of the way of it. So this has been a wayward start here from McFarlane. Yeah, it's a no ball. So four sundries already in the over. McFarlane now opts to go back over the wicket. Here he's in now. That's a better delivery. It's short delivery and it's played down the ground. But it's well stopped of his own bowling there by the big man. Here Paneros will be slightly disappointed. He didn't get that away to the boundary. As McFarlane will continue again to him now. This one's a good delivery and this one stays low. And it nearly beats the defences there of Paneros. Who I think gets a thick inside edge onto his leg. Yeah, that's better from McFarlane. Yeah, he nearly snuck through. So McFarlane is in for the final ball of the opening over. He was in there to Paneros, and this one's a good length delivery. Paneros plays this way on the leg side, and it's fielded by Fowler to end with. No wicket for four after one. It's going to be the vice skipper, Jake Kasachin, to bowl the second over of the innings. 
It's in now to Paneros. He begins with a full toss. Oh, Paneros has hit this over the fence. So he goes for a duck. That's a big wicket there for the men in orange as they remove the nice Gary Skipper. And Jake Casaccio with his first ball of the tournament picks up a wicket. And the nice Gary Skipper knows that that is a big moment in this match. So nice Gary, one for four in the second over. And that wicket now brings Josh Bolling to the crease. It was his heroics with the bat in last year's quarter final against the men in orange, which got nice Gary home. Can he play a similar innings in this one? So it'll be Kasatcha into Bolling for his first delivery. That's a back of leg delivery. He's hit it straight back to Kasatcha. There will not be any repeats of last year's heroics. Bolling has gone first delivery. And nice Gary are now in big trouble here in match four. It's a smart catch of his own bowling. Kasatcha on fire to begin the tournament. Well, the two-time champions are two for four in the second over. And that wicket now brings Jack Sullivan to the crease. Not exactly known for his batting prowess, but he's going to have to get some sort of score here, you feel. And the Crabs are on for a bonus point. Here's Kasatcha, is into Sullivan. He plays his back down the pitch well, but it's no run. So just like that, nice Gary is staring down the barrel here. Two more deliveries for a bonus point here for the men in orange. And Kasatcha is into Sullivan, and there it is! He goes right through Sullivan! It's a bonus point for the men in orange. Nice Gary have been bowled out for four here in match four. Not a single run was scored off the bat in the innings. Jake Kasatcha picks up three wickets in the one over. Nice Gary will be forced to defend another small target at the WCG. And the men in orange could get maximum points here. So we thought they'd struggle with the bat without Harry Dean. But we didn't quite think it was going to be this bad. Nice Gary bowled out for four in their opening match of the tournament. Not a single run was scored off the bat with all three batsmen dismissed for ducks. They've defended small targets at the Australia Day T20 Big Bash before and they're going to have to do it again. It's five to get for the men in orange. So it's going to be Ryan McFarlane who will get this run chase underway for the men in orange. Making his full WCG debut in this contest. Can he be the hero with the blade? So if they can chase this down inside two overs, they will get another bonus point. It's going to be George Pinellas by the first over of the innings. Here he's in there and he begins with a back of a leg delivery. But this one slides down the leg side. So that is not going to help the Blues calls. It's just one good hit here and the men in orange will claim maximum points here in match four. As Pinellas in again now to McFarlane. It's driven back down the ground but it's well stopped there by the blue skipper who keeps his side alive. He has fairly hammered this, the big man. That's a good stop from Paneros. He goes without saying, but wickets are the order of the day here for the men in blue. As Paneros will continue again now to McFarlane. And this one's a good delivery. It's an absolute beauty, which has the beating McFarlane all ends up. He hands on heads from the men in blue. They know that that could well have been the moment. They just needed a faint edge there. Paneros to continue around the wicket to McFarlane, the opening over of the run chase. Here's in now, and this one's hammered towards Sullivan there at cover, who stops it well, and McFarlane moves through for a single. Well, I wonder if this was a chance, it's probably been tough. Yeah, he's no chance of catching that, but he's kept his side alive there, Sullivan. It's a good stop. No wicket for two in the opening over. Paneros will come in once again here to McFarlane. This one's a short delivery. It's pulled away on the leg side. And there it is for the men in orange. That one goes all the way for six. McFarlane the hero for the men in orange. As they claim a double bonus point here in match four. To crush the two-time champions. And they have sent a massive statement to the tournament. The men in orange smack my pitch up. Have hammered the two-time champions here in match four by three wickets to claim a double bonus point and rocket straight to the top of Group D. And barring an absolute miracle, they're going to qualify for the knockout stage. And as for Knights Gary, they now face a door die clash against the six offenders in Match 8 to keep their tournament alive. So as we take a look at how Group D stands after one match, it's the men in orange smack my pitch up who sit a pretty at the top of Group D on four points after two bonus points. The two-time champions, Nice Gary, rooted to the bottom of the table. 
and they are going to have to beat the six offenders in their next contest. Otherwise, it'll be a first group stage exit for the two-time champions since 2019. So as we take a look at the next match of the tournament, it is a massive one as we go back to where it all began in Group A. The Eternal Rivals went up, and how's that meet for a third successive tournament in the group stages? A win for wet up, and they'll go through top of the group. However, they'll have to do what they haven't done since 2017 and beat the two-time champions at the Australia Day T20 Big Bash.